Hi, y'all. Let's talk about that whole Colin Kaepernick thing, you know, where he didn't stand up for the national anthem. So occasionally I will have discussions with veterans about flag burning and whether or not it should be uh, permitted or not permitted. And some veterans uh, are of the view that they did not go off to fight for their country for people to desecrate a venerated object like the flag. This is, of course, not true. Uh, one of the things about going off to fight for I don't know, for example, free speech rights is that you don't get to control through the law what other people get to say, how other people uh, get to um, express themselves. And think about the Snyder against Phelps case where the, you know, the Phelps family, the Westboro Baptist Church, pe uh, church people protest dead soldiers' uh, funerals and they protested the funeral of a Marine and the family was aggrieved by that and they wanted to sue. It goes up to the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court says, no, the First Amendment shields even this very obnoxious kind of protesting dead soldiers' behavior. Uh, no money for you. Now, on the, the one hand, you have uh, the criminal law, you know, that's the issue about the flag being burned or not being burned, and on the other, uh, the other case, you have um, the civil penalties, uh, neither of which do I support. should not be unlawful, there should be no civil ramifications, and nothing you can get in court for uh, someone having said something or done something in an expressive way that you find uh, particularly obnoxious. But then there's the Kaepernick, the Kaepernick thing. All he did was sit down during the national anthem, which no one is arguing should be a crime, and I haven't heard anybody argue that he owes anybody damages for that. Nevertheless, there are some veterans who say, I stand with him, I went to fight for this, blah, blah, blah. No one is talking about using the criminal law to punish this man for engaging in behavior that a lot of people find offensive. Uh, and no one is talking about uh, his owing damages to anybody for engaging in behavior that a lot of people find offensive. All they're saying is, the dude's a dick and we don't like him. You know, pfft, that kind of thing. And I agree. The dude's a dick. I don't like him. Uh, he is perfectly free to sit, stand, whatever, during the national anthem. The distinction here is one between social pressure, you know, people that, people saying you're a dick, saying all kinds of rude things about you, and people wanting to use the criminal or civil law to punish you in court, to take away your property, or to take away your liberty and put you in a small cage as though you have gone out and raped and murdered someone. Those I'm totally against. Social pressure's fine. This guy has, in, has chosen, in public, to engage in an expressive activity. He has chosen to give his opinion, and one of the consequences that goes with giving your opinion in public is that all the other people in public get to stand up and tell you their opinion about why your opinion is shit. That's the way it's supposed to work. The guy shouldn't lose his job. Although, I will just point out, this is an example as to why athletes should not be viewed as role models in the same way, in the same way that uh, celebrities, actors, and whatnot should not be consulted uh, by, for that reason, for their opinion on issues of the day, at least no more frequently than any other randomly chosen person from the street, you know, who I think the media baits with cheeseburgers most of the time, but putting that off to the side. It's, you know, the fact that a person can admirably chase a ball, like my dog, is, you know, something to applaud. Yes, you can run fast and chase a, do uh, chase a ball, much like my dog. Good job. Does not for a moment suggest they have anything intelligent to say on any subject. And indeed, intellect has nothing whatever to do with why it is that they're known. And the fact that they are known neither adds nor detracts from what it is they have to say. To the extent that you want to say that there's some some wiggle room there. It's, it's in that they are publicly known not for being smart, unless they are independently known for that. And that's the reason to kind of, uh, you know, push them off to the back burner and, you know, I don't know, maybe do some random sampling uh, for opinions. Because they are no better, they're in no better or worse position to have a view on any issue of the day or any, any subject um, that, that will come up. So, so too with actors, unless they are independently educated in something and you know, they will be, have something meaningful to say other than, I'm rich, I'm famous, please hear what I have to say. This is a great marketing ploy, but uh, you know, logical fallacies and rhetorical fallacies are often persuasive. Britney Spears likes you know, the latest soda of the day. You should like it too. This famous person who you know, who you see in the news and listen to you singing in your ear all the time likes our product. So that's a reason for you to like our product. No, it isn't. 
your product and how it fits with me is a reason for me to like or dislike your product. The fact Britney Spears or Justin Timberlake or whoever else uh, who can admirably you know, make noises, or if they're a movie actor, they can admirably read the lines that someone else has written for them, doesn't provide me with one wit of a reason to think that, that your product is anything like important to me. So, there's just that. And uh, back to the movie thing, the movie actor thing. Uh, people seem to confuse the the, uh, the characters that actors play with you know what the actors actually like. And it's like, no, no, no. They admirably deliver the lines written by someone else. The fact that uh, with an entire army of people teaching them what to say, how to say it, how to act, so as to pretend as though they are a spy or a surgeon or a cop, doesn't actually mean they have anything to say on those subjects because they aren't actually educated on them. And indeed, anyone who is a spy or a soldier or a cop or whatever, surgeon, uh, can watch it and spot errors left, right, and center. They only have to act, pretend, they only have to fake sufficiently well to pull the wool over the average person's eyes, not a person who's expert in that subject. So that's what I have to say about uh, that kind of uh, his st sitting down the distinction between using the criminal law, the civil law, or just telling a person he's a dick for what he's done in public, and why it is that actors and athletes uh, should not be viewed as role models, because they aren't. Nothing that they do is otherwise admirable in respect of all the things they want to be invited to express an opinion on. The fact that, the, that these people do something admirable, like, you know, run in a straight line, or even a jagged line, you know, you've got to, sometimes you got to you know, bank to the left and bank to the right in order to, to to get that ball and make it down the field or whatever it is they have to do in golf. I don't I don't really know. I don't I don't follow the the shows on this subject. Does not uh, make them role models. The fact that they can admirably read words <laughs> written for them does not make them a role model. And the fact that they can make a, a joyful tones with their throat does not make them role models. Stop giving these people airtime independently of what it is they are known for. When they admirably chase a ball in some exquisite kind of way, by all means talk about it. When they really fake like they are knowledgeable on a subject because it's been written for them to portray it in a movie, by all means talk about it. When they make really joyful noises on stage with the microphone, talk about it. Outside of those issues, what they say and do is no more important than what anybody else says or does. All right, have a great day.